welcome to episode 12 of Rugby Vibe. Last week, you'll remember, we looked at the back line for the Springbok squad going forward. This week, we're going to look at Springbok forward pack that we can take into the future. And if I can just qualify by saying there are incumbent rugby players who we absolutely would want to keep and are a great credit and an asset to South African rugby. But we're looking at the youngsters and who we'd pick going forward. So why don't we start at the back? So looking at loose forwards, let's start at number eight. We've made four selections. We've kept the incumbents as one of them, Pierre Spiss. We've got Dwayne Vermeulen when he comes back from injury. Willem Elberts, who obviously could play elsewhere. And Josh Strauss, I'm not sure, but like Samson, how well he'll go now that he's shaved that beard. Who do you start at eight if pressed to start someone? I would actually go for Merlin. Again, he's going to have to prove himself in Super 14, but I like the fact that he's got an all-round game, and I also think Albert will have more impact off the bench, and I've picked it with that in view. I'm, I'm not even going to say anything because I agree with you wholeheartedly, and I don't think we need to talk about the flanks because I think they pick themselves. Absolutely. And I'll tell you why. I know that we're going to say, but what about Juan Smith when he comes back from injury? He's the best rugby player in the world, and he probably is. But Skulkberger on the blind side, Heinrich Brusso on the open side, and then we move Juan Smith, moving straight to the locks, and let's talk four locks. Juan Smith is my pick of four lock. Now I'll tell you who we put down. We put John Smith down, we put Reno Olstadt down, and Danny Rousseau, the incumbent. And obviously, once again, we're not talking about discarding all the incumbents, but, and Rousseau had a wonderful World Cup, so we'd keep him. But talking into the future, Elstad's the player of the future. But Juan Smith, for me, it's time to retread. What do you think of that? Absolutely. As long as his attitude's good towards it, I think he will make a magnificent fallout. Well, he hits rucks like Bucky's Buerta. And he's a line-out option, no question. He can jump, he can def definitely jump at two. In fact, he started life as a lock. Moving to five, Andres Becker's the standout. Franco van der Merwe probably played himself into contention. Who do you start at five? We would go Andres Becker. It really does depend, again, on, on, on the Super 15 form. But I think van der Merwe has been magnificent week in and week out, been a top performer. Can you think of another five that we could pick in Victor's absence? Absolutely not. All right, so moving into the front row, Yanni Duplessis, the incumbent, we've got to keep him. Props develop late. The more experience, the better they get. But I like this Pat Saliers. And he's come on in leaps and bounds. He's definitely benefited from Mitchell's influence. I thought his, I thought his curry kafana was incredible. Can you think of another tight end that we could take? BJ Buerta, maybe? No, I think, I think you've got the two there. You've got the youngster Saliers who we want to breed. And, and I think Yanni Duplessis must continue on the path because I think he's getting better. Somebody else that we probably should mention is Kuni Oersteisen, who's just made the transition under Peter Durant from loose head to tight head. Love to see that experiment work. Absolutely. If, the, if that can work for us, then we're ready to kill two birds with one stone. Great ball carrier. Yeah, and great to have him in a, in a squad coming off a bench. Absolutely. Um, moving to loose head, well, uh, we, you know, we certainly don't need to go beyond the two incumbents, Gathra Steenkamp and, of course, the beast, Tendai and Tawarira. And do we need to talk about hookers? I mean, there, there's, there, I mean there's the standout hooker maybe ever in the world is Bismarck Duplessis, but you'd want to take Skulk Brits on a tour, wouldn't you? Absolutely. So versatile, so quick, so experienced now, and, and, and knows how to play in different conditions. So if, if pressed then, our squad would be Alberts off the bench, starting with Vermeulen, Skulk and Heinrich, Andres and Juan, Yanni Duplessis, his brother Bismarck, and Guthrow at loose head. Um, and then coming off the bench, hopefully Kuni Oersteisen as, as a prop. Scott Britz as a hooker. And who else do you take? Willem Alberts, the wrecking ball? Pick, well, Alberts has to pick himself because I think he really gives you, gives you something in that second half when the game's broken up, the best ball carry around. I'd like to see Reino Alstad tour with the box because he's got that sort of raw aggression that made Bucky's Buerta the enforcer that he was. In fact, when we saw him come up against Buerta in that first game, I think it was of Super Rugby this year, he stood up to him and that was wonderful to watch. And, and Buerta rates him. You can't get a better indictment than that. So the team that you can see is our final 15 plus seven reserves. That's what we've come up with over the last two weeks. But it's all actually going to depend on who coaches the side. The Lions are a wonderful example of what a great coach can do in their own admission to ordinary rugby players, turn them into an extraordinary team. And that's what we want to see from the box. That's all from me. I'm Stephen Morris. This is Rugby Vibe, brought to you by Prongster.